And welcome back to Everyman Driver, where we post new videos to YouTube every single day, Monday through Friday. Make sure to subscribe to the link right above my finger to receive updates on all our new video uploads. And this week, we're reviewing the 2013 Infiniti EX37 Journey all-wheel drive with the tech package. It's a good-looking vehicle. It looks great in the black here in the snowy inland northwest. Yeah, I'll take you under the hood and let you know about the Infiniti's new engine. It's an upgrade from last year. Dave will let you know what he thinks about the car's ride and handling. And we'll give you our take on the Everyman Driver ownership scale. Everyman Driver starts now. Since its introduction, the Infiniti EX luxury crossover has been known for its uniquely personal style, combining a right-sized sculpted exterior, a rewarding interior environment, and a suite of advanced technology features ranging from a round-view monitor to distance control assist. The 2013's exterior combines the look and feel of a luxury coupe and a crossover's flexibility, with sporty proportions including a long hood, short front and rear overhangs, rearward cabin, and a smooth coupe-like roofline. Its dramatic interior offers an invigorating and engaging environment for sure, one that is both indulgent and inspiring. Much more on all of these elements, but first, the engine and performance. The 2013 EX37 BOSA 3.7 liter V6 that produces 325 horsepower with 267 foot-pounds of torque. This replaces the old 3.5 V6, hence the new 37 name. This also comes with a new 7-speed automatic transmission that is both smooth and fairly efficient. But it could be a little bit more fuel efficient. The EPA estimates on this vehicle is 17 miles per gallon in the city and 24 on the highway. I've been getting right there around 20 miles per gallon in mixed driving, but I'm surprised because you do have that seven speed automatic transmission. So the trade-off must be all that power. Yeah, there's three or four different trim levels overall when it comes to this car. And unfortunately, they've all got the same engine. So if you're looking for better fuel economy, you might want to look at something else. There is plenty of power under the hood of the EX37, 28 more horses compared to last year's model, Alex. And, and when it comes to steering, luxurious while still responsive and ride a bit on the harsh side, especially for a pure luxury crossover, but might have to do with the 19 inch wheels and low profile tires, which you do get in this deluxe touring package for an extra 2400 bucks. I don't know if it's worth it to you, but that's what you get. And finally, the EX37 corners surprisingly flat for a sporty sedan versus a more clunky crossover. Yeah, I've actually been really surprised at how well Infiniti has been able to bring that sporty sedan feel, even though this is, in theory, a crossover. I mean, it's built on the G37 chassis, but um, it's really, really been a nice driving package. So many of these cars claim to drive like a sedan and have the space of an SUV. In reality, they don't have either. This part, this car has got the sedan driving part figured out. Mm -hmm. The SUV cargo, well, that's a different story. While we're inside the uh, the car while we're driving it, Alex, what's your impression of this layout? I mean, this is super luxurious. I really love the interior of this. Outside, you don't really realize how cool it is on the inside. Yeah, on the outside, uh, this is, I think we would both agree, this is a really good looking car. Mm -hmm. But the interior really does take you by surprise. I had not seen it prior to taking delivery of the car and it is absolutely unbelievable. There's, I believe, four different um, leather color options that you can get. It's sort of a dual cockpit design extremely, extremely luxurious and also really user-friendly. The entertainment and navigation systems use a, it's pretty cool, there's an arrow buttons, but there's also a wheel to turn. It took me all of 15 seconds to figure out how to use this system. The whole interior 
is absolutely great. Hand stitching on the leather. Um, you can get brushed metal along with what I believe is real wood. Inlays in the doors, absolutely gorgeous. And we've seen some really confusing instrument panels and, and all these different buttons. And to me, this seems to be pretty clear and simple to understand. Uh, clear writing on the buttons. I've driven a number of the Infinities and they're very consistent. Yeah, it's, it's great. You. Once you've been in an Infinity interior like this, you wonder how a company like the Acura RDX that we've driven before ever conceives their interior because Infinity gets it done more elegantly and more simply with, I bet, half the buttons of an Acura. Well, as you've gathered by now, Alex and I are average size adults. He's about 6'2", I'm about six feet tall. And I think the best seats in the house are here in the front two seats. Alex is making his way around the back to show you what it's like in the back seat. Now, as you look at the shape of the car, it's got a sloping roof line. And as it goes back, you're getting less and less room as Alex will illustrate right now. Ugh. As you can see, rear leg room is in a word, pathetic. I've seen more leg room out of compact sedans, and this claims to be a crossover SUV. Also, headroom here, I've got about an inch left before I'm maxed out. Unfortunately, things go from bad to worse. We'll head to the cargo area, and you'll find out why. The ass end of the Infinity is truly a thing of beauty with this nicely sloping rear window and a lock-unlock that is integrated right into the trim. Couple fingers underneath here, opens the gate. Dave, what do you think of uh, rear cargo room? Well, you know, you have your spare tire right here and fits nicely, but because of that being right there, you're losing some cargo space. And this entryway is a little bit higher off the ground than I would like. But the, my favorite part of the back, the back, minus the lack of cargo space, is how the seats go down. You have buttons here on the side. One quick push the button and they automatically go down. That in itself is almost standard nowadays, but you push the button again on the back side of it, hold it down, the seats come back up. I like that because you don't have to worry about going around to uh, the door and having to push these things back. That is very cool. And with the seats down, you get a fair amount of room this way, but you still don't get very much room this way, lengthwise versus heightwise. So overall, again, with these crossover wannabe SUVs, but still part sedan, cargo room really suffers, especially because of this nicely sloping roof line here. You lose a ton of space compared to if they were to just square off the back like a normal, um, say, a state or a wagon would do. You know, actually, if you were to say you cut the vehicle off right here, from this point on, it looks like a sedan. Yeah, it does. They seem like Infinity just added on a little bit of cargo space here to call it an SUV, and I think that's a mistake. I think they tried to force two issues together to make uh, a, a mini crossover or a station wagon, and it could better have left alone with a sedan or go with a crossover. Yeah, it doesn't always work. These manufacturers always want to tell you, we've taken the best of a sedan and the best of a SUV and put them together. In our experience, they've usually taken the worst parts of a sedan and the worst parts of SUV and put them together. I personally would just look at getting a, a G37, which is a great car. You're going to get basically the cargo space and with the all-wheel drive that comes on most of these cars as standard nowadays, uh, there's no reason not to. There are three optional packages available with the EX37 Journey all-wheel drive, and our tester has all three. The technology package, which includes the intelligent cruise control, blind spot warning, lane departure prevention, and so on for $2,700. The deluxe touring package, which we mentioned before for $2,400, and that's the 19-inch wheels, as well as power-up folding and second row seats. And then the premium package for an extra three grand, which is the Infinity hard drive navigation system, seven inch color touch screen, as well as the Bose 11 speaker premium sound system, to name a few. So the MSRP on the 2013 Infinity EX37 Journey all wheel drive with a tech package is about $40,000. Our tester is nicely loaded. It's just over $49,000. So, Alex, on the Everyman Driver ownership scale of zero to 72 months, how many months do you give this vehicle? I'm gonna give this vehicle 36 months, and it pains me to give it such a low rating, but 
Essentially, this car, if it's going to be a crossover, needs to have good rear leg room and it needs to have decent cargo space. It doesn't have either one of those. I would either look at getting an Audi Q5, which has more rear leg room and cargo space and is a German luxury crossover, or look at just getting the G37 sedan. You're going to get basically the same cargo room a better driving experience, um, I definitely think that's the way to go. I'm gonna give it about between 24 and 36 months. This is not a car that I'd like to have for a long period of time. I think the interior is fantastic. That is the greatest selling point. The front two seats, it's beautiful on the inside. This car happens to be a gorgeous looking car on the outside as well. But for that, for that much money and uh, how much the fuel economy, it being on the low end, yeah. I want more car. I want more space. I want better value. So I'm gonna give it 24 to 36 months. Hey, that'll do it for this episode of Everyman Driver. Alongside Alex Afreese, I'm Dave Erickson. We'll see you next time.